I mean, now it's getting so built up, which is a bit of a yes. shame. Um, People like you keep talking about it, man. I know, I know. <laughs> now I'm sitting here saying it on a podcast, which isn't helping my case, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to Mosaic of China, a podcast about people who are making their mark in China. I'm your host, Oscar Fuchs. So let me say right from the start that this is not a regular episode. I'm taking some time off from releasing regular weekly episodes while I produce the next season of the podcast. If you're a subscriber to the premium version of the show, on Patreon internationally or on iFadian in China, you will already know this because I've just sent you the details of the first batch of people I'm recording interviews with next month. So if you want to get involved and help to pose questions for these future guests of Season 3, now is the perfect time to subscribe. It costs just the equivalent of two US dollars per month, and that also gives you immediate access to all six hours of extra content from Season 2 as well. So what is today's episode all about? Well, if you've listened to at least one regular episode from the season, you'll know that as part of each interview, I ask every guest the same 10 simple questions on their tastes and opinions of life in China. And it's the answers to these 10 questions that form the content for not just today's episode, but the following nine special compilation episodes coming up too. These compilations are a great way to hear all 30 voices from season 2 together, and to see how people from a variety of different backgrounds approach the same topic. And if you didn't listen to someone's original episode from earlier in the year, hopefully this will nudge you to go back and check out their full interview too. Here in China, we're just coming up to the October Golden Week holidays, so it's perfect timing to talk about travel destinations in mainland China. As you're listening, be sure to think about your own favorite travel destination in China and find a photo to share with the Mosaic of China community on social media. Or even share a snap from wherever you might be on the road in China this week. Just search for Mosaic of China on Instagram or Facebook, or you can join one of the listeners' groups on WeChat. Search for my WeChat ID Mosaic of China and I'll add you to the group myself. Having said all that, let's now get on with it and listen to the answers to the question, what is your favorite destination within mainland China? Joe McFarland, the product sourcing leader from episode 18. Wow, see there's so many. However, one of the advantages of the job is that we do go to all parts of China. And there is a garden furniture factory that's in an area called Linhai. Have you ever been there? Never heard of it. Absolutely stunning. And it's like beautiful countryside. And in the middle of it is a furniture factory. Oh, God. But it's one of my favorite factories to go to because it's in such a beautiful location. That is nice. And are there any places that you have to go to as a sourcer where you're like, oh, God, do I have to go back there? And, you know, I quite enjoy going to all the places because they've all got like different Chinese character. I mean, in Shanghai, everything's so shiny and beautiful and fabulous. But like some of the places we go, it's much more gritty. And I actually really like that because it does remind you where you are. Yeah. Keep it real, you've Oscar. Got, you've got to keep it real. Michael Kinsey, the fire engineer from episode 25. I think one of my favourite places is Zhejiang as a province. Mm. Uh, lots of places of natural beauty. It's so close to Shanghai as well. Um, I've been whitewater rafting there. I've been hiking there. I can go to Hangzhou. I've been um, to different islands just off the coast of Zhejiang. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And you can do it all within a weekend if you live in Shanghai. Mm. So I think it's an amazing place. Nongolo Bengu, the African community organizer from episode 14. I'm so embarrassed. I haven't I haven't traveled a lot in, in China. Really? I've been to um Anji. Beautiful. Yeah. The the further you get away from the city, yeah. the better. Jamie Barris, the street food expert from episode two. There's so many good places, it's hard to, to pick one, but my most favorite place that I've gone recently would be Ningxia. Oh. And I went out there with a couple of my girlfriends to wine country, and we had amazing food, amazing wine, just the most hospitable people. You know, it's funny because people are always like, oh, Shanghainese people are so mean, and, da -da -da. and I'm like, they're not, they're lovely. And then you go to Ningxia and you're like, oh, maybe in comparison, because they're just so welcoming and so friendly. 
Zhang Zhiyuan, the humanities professor from episode three. I would say Shanghai. Okay. It's very cosmopolitan. Yeah. There's no real Shanghainese. Right. They were from Ningbo and Suzhou. So the Shanghainese is actually the combination of Ningbo Nese and Suzhou Nese. And then all the foreign influences on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, Shanghainese collect a lot of Western、uh, languages like Lao Kala. It means an old gentleman who knows how to enjoy his petty bourgeois life. Color means white color. Oh, color! How funny. Yeah, and when we say "xiao la ji xiao" is little. "La ji" means a、uh, disciplined woman. It's, but <laughs> but anyway, "la ji" is laissez faire. Oh right. Yeah. How funny. So it's from French and English.、Mm. Yeah. And I guess because it is a city of immigrants, like everyone here from yeah, day one. Yeah, no one can claim that I am a real local Chinese. No. Douglas C, the island businessman from episode fifteen. So this is a tricky part because China keeps changing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now, my favorite place in China is Dixie Lake. Oh right, that's somewhere in Shanghai, right? Yeah, right in between Sinsa Island and、uh, downtown Shanghai. And I rented an apartment there、uh, earlier this year because I just I really like Dixie Lake. It's like a mini young version of Shenzhen, just full of young people in Dixie Lake. Everyone's full of energy and just full of growth potential. AJ Jane, the car designer from episode twenty-one. Shanghai. I've、uh, traveled quite a bit in、uh, China. I've moved around all my life. I've lived in many different places. Shanghai gives me the impression that I'm living in a different city every day. Everything just constantly dynamic. The city reinvents itself, as it were. Five years ago, I was in Pasadena in the college that I went to, and these kids were drawing what they thought was the future of transportation. And then they asked me how I went to work, and I told them that I scan a QR code and get on any bicycle, get on a metro, then get off the metro and take my Segway, and then <laughs> zip. Into my office, and that sounded more futuristic than some of the things that they were conceptualizing. So, yeah. Cassandra Chen, the heavy metal bar owner from episode sixteen. I like Sanya, lying the beach.、Um, I like Mo Gan Shan, which is close to the nature in the mountain. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. You spent a lot of time in Beijing. What do you think about Beijing?、Um, it's big. People are more easy. They're more straightforward, right? That's right. Right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I、mm-hmm. think people in Shanghai they have a reputation for being a bit more complicated, right? They don't always say what they mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Stefan Wiemme, the head of consumer insights at L'Oreal, from episode one. I've been lucky to、uh, have traveled to many places in China, but Beijing. Remains my favorite destination. So much culture, so many places, and also, of course, for me, a lot of、uh, memories. It combines modernity and traditions. And a, a friend of mine told me quite rightly so that if Shanghai is the heart of China,、uh, Beijing is its head. It's the brain. It's a cold city. It's a mysterious city, but it's a powerful city. It's an energizing city at the scale of China. Wow. Ji Yong, the transgender teacher from episode thirty. I don't have a particular favorite destination, but a destination that I have recent enthusiasm for is Hainan Province because after my surgery, that's the place where I wore my bikini in public for the first time. And it was such a huge, affirming aspect to be on the beaches and to be seen in public. So, at this point in time, that has a huge place in my heart. Murray King, the public affairs leader from episode twenty-nine. Pingyao, Pingyao Guchang. I think maybe others have said that too. It's、no. incredible. I would recommend it to anybody. You know, it's a walled city. It's about six square kilometers. Rises up out of the agricultural plains of Shanxi Province, and it is a tremendous experience. It feels like you're stepping into a, a Ming Dynasty movie. 
And within that walled city, um, it's a protected UNESCO World Heritage Site. So there's really no development on the outside of the, of the walled city. So it's mostly just farmland. Of course, there's a few tourist things that have popped up. But within the, the walled city, there really are no cars. You can rent a bicycle. You can bike around the city on the wall. Um, there's lots of traditional hotels and restaurants and great food and great people. Um, and it's just a wonderful experience. The photos I saw from my friend's holiday there did show a mass of tourists, though. So yeah. that's the one downside, right? Well, I was lucky enough to go 20 years ago. Um. <sighs> Yovana Jung, the handicrafts designer from episode eight. I really love Yellow Mountain. I really love that area there. Mm, that, that would be some place that Bishan that we visited so many times. It's uh, our friends, they have a, a beautiful hotel there in the middle of the fields. It was an old oil factory before. Really, really nice. Yeah. Wow. Seth Harvey, the education coach from episode 19. Chongqing is a pretty cool city too. When I was there for a business trip, it reminded me of like the old kind of Shanghai that I had first encountered that I'd fallen in love with. Now everything's more modernized and it's changed incrementally. But when you go to Chongqing, it's kind of like that, like, ah, reminds you of the past and it brings up those memories and people are super friendly and you feel like I'm a representative for not just Americans, but of all foreigners. And how I act um, and interact with people uh, kind of sets a status quo in their mind of, of how all foreigners are. Nice. But that's just you being nice to Chongqing. You actually still prefer Shanghai. A million times over. <laughs> Sean Harmon, the beer company CEO from episode nine. There's definitely more beautiful places in China uh, than Mogenshan. But to me, it's kind of a sentimental place. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of our annual company meetings there with our management team. Uh, we cook together, we run together through the mountains, we, we do walks, and, and we create the new strategy for the new year. I also go there with my friends uh, on weekends to get out of the city. To me, it has a very special place in my heart. I mean, now it's getting so built up, which is a bit of a yes, shame. Yes. Um, People like you keep talking about it, man. I know, I know. <laughs> now I'm sitting here saying it on a podcast, which isn't helping my case, I guess. <laughs> DJ B.O., the DJ from episode 23. My favorite destination in China, we've touched about this, is Wuhan. It was a city that I've been to more than any other. I love Inferno in Shanghai, Temple in Beijing, but Wuhan Prison is the coolest bar there. And every good bar, every great bar, I should say, becomes the personality of the manager. Her name is Dong Dong, and she is an explosive character that can't really be characterized. Is she 20? Is she 40? She wears these layers of clothing. She's got these big dreadlocks and she cackles when she laughs. And Wuhan prison bar is almost a manifestation of who she is. <laughs> Björn Dahlman, the Swedish clown from episode 17. My heart will always be on Wudang Mountains. But what I heard is that they did what they did in Shaolin Mountain. They banned all the schools on the mountains and they built a village below, which is... Ah, yeah. Coco Santi, the drag performer from episode 5. Uh, my favorite place in China is any place with a very large window and a coffee shop. Now, the reason being is because I like going on a train and going to a random city, finding a coffee shop, and just sitting by the window, doing my work, and people watching. That's just what I enjoy doing. I love doing it in the US as well. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, you're a very urban person, right? Oh my god, yeah. I'm a city girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did Boy Scouts, <laughs> that. That's all. <laughs> Louise Roy, the childbirth and lactation specialist from episode six. I don't get to travel much. I think you probably hear that from a lot of people in healthcare. I don't travel a lot because babies, babies, babies. They're just mm. born all the time. Um, but I really enjoyed visiting years back um, Erme Shan and Le Shan. I liked Erme Shan particularly because it just, I come from the Blue Mountains in Australia and nice. it felt like that laid back mountainy kind of thing. Yes. It was nice. And both of them are in Sichuan province, are they? Yes. Erme, I don't know, actually. Erme Shan is right next door to Le Shan, where ah, the big Buddha is. Yes. Casey Hall, the fashion journalist from episode 22. 
I do love Sichuan Province.、Mm. Uh, many years ago, I went to Jujago National Park, which is just one of the most spectacular places I've ever seen. A few years after I went, there was a, a major earthquake,、um, which damaged the park. And I would be very interested to go back and see what it looks like now, and and see how different it is. Yeah, I've heard. That because of the earthquake, the clear waters that you could see now are no longer clear, right? So、mm. I would imagine you'd be disappointed going back. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's better not to. Maybe、mm. it's better to keep the nice memory in my mind.、Um, It'll bounce back, hopefully, right? But I just think nature just needs time, right? Yeah, indeed.、Mm. Dan Majid, the Tibetan social enterprise leader, from episode ten. I really like Lhasa, Central Tibet. Yeah.、Um, when I went to Lhasa, like I really like the the style and made me feel like really connect to the the culture. Yeah. 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 I would love to go to Lhasa. <laughs> Wendy Saunders, the architect from episode twelve. Before I had kids, I used to travel a lot more. I think. For me, the most surprising then trips that we made was to go to Xinjiang to Kashgar.、Mm. Just because the landscape is just amazing, it's so beautiful, but it's also such a different China. It's a totally different people. I still remember very clearly the feelings that I had when I was there. It's just so surprising. Yeah, very different. Salome Chen, the investor and developer from episode twenty-four. I was a Silk Road. I was born in Yumen, close to Dunhuang, and not only because I was born there. I went there、uh, when I was forty, exactly for my birthday, and also my dad was eighty. It was more like a birthday gift for my dad. Beautiful, yeah, and also there's so many different cultures there. There's cultural communication, Buddhism, Hinduism. You can see the landscape change, the culture change, the language change, and even people they look different. If you go deep in history, the world become much much bigger. Yes. Yeah. Michelle Chu, the improvisational comedian from episode twenty. Last year, I went to Quanzhou in、uh, Fujian Province. Right. Have you ever been there before? I know about it because of the、uh, they have the first Muslims in China. Ah,、uh, right? yeah, yeah. And、uh, when I was there, I found that not only Muslim in that city, but also with some other religion, very old religion. How to say? People will respect to the fire. Ah,、uh, Zoroastrianism. So, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. So. Each kind of culture, each kind of religion, they have their own space perfectly, with harmony in that city. It's very interesting. I I really love this kind of、uh, you know atmosphere. I really want to go now. Yeah. Catherine Wong, the Peruvian healer from episode four. Yunnan, it is beautiful. I feel the energies in that place are really pure and amazing. Vittorio Francese, the lawyer from episode twenty-seven. I was、uh, stunned by、uh, Yunnan's mountains.、Um, I found places where you can access only with the jeep that is driven by a local guy that can bring you up in the mountain, and that was、uh, pretty amazing. You arrive to a small village, and it's just a little mountain village as you imagine in your dreams. I felt for the first time. Uh, that traveling in China wasn't something too mainstream. I felt like you still can get to isolated place up on a mountain. Zhao Huiling, the Africa travel vlogger from episode twenty-eight. Ah,、uh, Yunnan. Yeah. Lu Gu Hu, beautiful.、Mm. There's big lake. Yes. We watched the sun rise in that, and then we went to this very famous national park. It was very pristine. Alex Shower, the clean energy entrepreneur from episode eleven.、Um, actually, one of the most incredible places I've still been is this village of Shizhou, China,、uh, which is near Dali、uh, in Yunnan Province. A very small village, and it's actually the place that I did my first project. 
uh, at this place called the Linden Center, which is an amazing historical resort. And it's just one of the places I fell in love with. And um, there's a lot of history, a lot of um, amazing food. They have this thing called the Shijo Baba, which is this like, it's like a pizza almost, but like in a Janbing flavor. I don't know how to describe it, but it's amazing. Everyone <laughs> loves you, Nan. Zhang Yuan, the performance art exhibitor from episode 7. Dali? It's like a utopia, or it's like a hippie place, right? That you could uh, relax yourself and do not think too much. And people seem to be think differently. And uh, there are many artists working there. And I like the fact that the clouds are so close to you. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah. Crystal Mo, the fine dining expert from episode 26. Yunnan and Shangri-La, where it's the Switzerland of China. Absolutely stunning. Every other person, when asking that question, says Yunnan. <laughs> so uh, I think I should call this podcast Mosaic of Yunnan. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if everyone says Yunnan, that's the right answer. I mean, Yunnan is so diverse. I had my honeymoon in Shishuang Bana, and we were in the rainforest in an orchid forest. And then I've also been to the northern parts around Shangri-La, up into the snow-capped mountains, you know, all in one province. Yes, and everything in between. Vladimir Jurovic, the brand naming expert from episode 13. It's actually the Inner Mongolia. I, I have the occasion to go there for a run up about every year in a marathon in the grassland in a small place called Siwuchi. You can easily get out of it, run out of it, and get into uh, running in those uh, green hills. Uh, it's beautiful. There's occasion to t- see double, triple rainbows and uh, to reconnect with the elements. So I like the focus. I like the simplicity of it. I like to walk on the street. There's still like some old cars because it's closer to Russia, some Volga brands. So, so, so there's a bit of uh, exotism, but uh, I like to run out of the city in the hills. Nice. Yeah. I love the way French people say focus. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> And there you have it, all 30 guests from season two in one episode. I'm releasing these compilation episodes every two weeks, so we'll be back with the next one on October the 12th, with the guests' answers to the question, what is your favourite KTV karaoke song? Mosaic of China is me, Oscar Fuchs, with artwork by Denny Newell. And as a gift for listening all the way until the end of today's show, I'll reward you with a special version of the outro music. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, hey, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you so much. (laughs)